Hello and welcome back to a special edition of the ASCA Weekly Podcast. I'm your host, Charles Fallon, back in here with another episode. And, well, I thought I wasn't going to be back until Speed Weeks. But, obviously, with the recent news of the announcement that you probably have heard by now, Obviously, at this point, Randall Woods has just announced that 2026 will be his final season in the ASCA. And this is obviously too big of a news story for me not to come on here and talk about it right away. So this is going to be a dedicated show to Randall Woods and the entire fallout from that announcement. And we also have to talk about the future of Michael White Racing and the number 18, that iconic car that Woods made now, basically, um, because it was also revealed that Tony DelVal will be taking over that car in the 2027 season. So with all that news to talk about, a huge moment in ASCA history, we have to, of course, sit down and discuss it. And we're going to do it right here. So before we get into it, though, we got to first shout out the sports premier partners, Rowdy Energy. You already know, click that link in the description box below. Go cop yourself a Rowdy Energy to help you stay awake throughout the remainder of this episode. And then circle B diecast slash plan B sales. Heading into Randall Woods' final season, you want to cop one of his replica diecasts, head it over to their website. And use coupon code ASCA for free shipping on any orders, $20 or more inside the U.S. So once again, shout out Route Energy, shout out Circle B Diecast slash Plan B Sales. And yeah, let's get into it. So obviously, you know what we're talking about today. Randall Woods has formally announced that the 2026 season will be his final as a full-time Ajax Cup Series driver. And I think that, to preface this, we've had a lot of newer ASC viewers within the um, last couple seasons, and which is fantastic. You love to see it. Um, Last year was the most watched season in ASCA history, which is absolutely spectacular that people are really starting to come to the sport. But um, they don't really in particularly know why this is such a big deal, because when you look at Randall Woods as of late, he's now 38 years old, of course, he hasn't won the last two years, and he's only won three races in the last four years, and all three of those victories came in 2023, you know, so they clearly have only seen Randall Woods past his prime, but Back in the day, I think, first off, before we even get to back in the day, Randall Woods is easily a top five driver in the ASCA all time. I, I don't even think that's debatable. First ballot Hall of Famer, um, you know, whenever that eligibility comes up for him to be elected, he's going to be elected immediately. First ballot Hall of Famer. Um, one of the best drivers the sport has ever seen, and there's absolutely zero debating that. He has the most wins of any driver in AAC history. Um, 29 Craftsman Series wins, that's the most all-time. 26 Cup Series victories, that's the most, I mean, that's the fourth most all-time. Um, you know, just an incredible talent. Um, obviously, a two-time Ajax Cup Series champion, 2019 and 2021. 2008 Craftsman Series champion. A combined 56 ASC wins, which, as I said, that's the most all time. And 2023 Ajax 200 winner, 2017 Northern 200 winner. So basically, he has accomplished everything in this sport except for winning the Winders 300. And we'll get into that because obviously that's been a story. That has been an ongoing storyline for like the past 10 years since he's been a second in the um the fifth running of that race which was the first race in the modern era he has been chasing that trophy his entire career and it looks like he's only going to have one more shot to um get it done 
So obviously that's going to be a major vocal point going into um, his final when those 300 start this April. But overall, you know, there was once upon a time we were having a serious debate on whether or not Diego Orchidi or Randall Woods was the best driver of the sports modern era. Now, obviously, I get that the past four years, Diego has clearly separated himself as the leader in the clubhouse. And I think that eventually we will probably very well see Todd Kidd surpass Randall Woods as the second best driver of the modern era. But as of right now, as Woods hangs it up, I think it is he is unequivocally the second best driver of the modern era. And like I said, a top five driver overall. You know, you can argue he could, he's the second best driver in history considering how hyper-competitive it is to compete in the ESC during the modern era. Um, he, many years, for many, many years, especially um, those formative years, you know, you look at 2014 to about 2021, you know, every week you went into a race saying, you got to watch for the five core. You got to watch for the 18 car. Um, he is going to be a car to be every year. You went into the championship saying the number five and the number 18, he's going to be right out there challenging for the title, you know, and that's just a testament to how incredible of a driver Woods was. He was truly one of the sports superstars back in the day. He, Diego Arquiti and Jimmy Hood, they used to run, you know, the ASCA back in the day. And obviously, you know, Hood retired in 2022, and now you've got Woods retiring now. And we'll get into the fact that this is truly the end of an era when Woods officially hangs it up in the EJX season finale. The sport will never be the same. And it's certainly going to be incredibly odd to not see him on the grid in um, 2027. But I think the defining moment of Woods' career is when he made that shocking move to leave his father's team. Um, Ronnie Woods, what his words, despite all the success he had, he had, what, five straight top three points finishes at the time. But he had kind of plateaued. He was only winning one race a year. He obviously still was chasing a championship that he had not won. Um, up to that point and he especially in 2017 the way he lost the title to his teammate Jimmy Hood I think there was a growing rift there between the two they had some contact also at Michigan um, a little earlier that year you know it was time for a change and Woods took a gamble at the time Mike White Racing really was not anything to write home about you know they had won the ajax 200 with michael white and they did win um they did win the subway grand prix at the streets of computerville with dan rogers but that was a strategy victory you know they were nothing to write home about but when woods inked that lifetime contract of michael white racing and you want to know how crazy a lifetime contract is Woods is signed the only lifetime contract in ASC history. Not even Diego Urquidy has a lifetime contract with Urquidy versus Racing. He has an eight-year deal that runs through 2029. Woods inked a lifetime contract in free agency. Like, you will never see that in silly season again, ever again. A lifetime contract. Are you serious? And that's the crazy part about Randall Woods and it just goes to show how much he wanted to win you know he inked a lifetime contract worth 100 million dollars um so basically in the end he ended up making around 11 million dollars a season and now you see how much these big names like Todd Kidd and Chris Barrymore and Bern Redder and some of these guys are bringing in you know 15 14 13 million dollars a season Woods never held out. He never asked for a raise, even though he certainly, you could argue, deserved one with all that he accomplished in the sport. He never held out for that. He 
was always focused on the job at hand. He never cared about the paychecks. He just wanted to win races and race in this sport. And, you know, him taking that gamble on Michael White Racing in Toyota, that they were going to put him in a position to compete for championships, it looked shocking at first, you know, because he was replacing Boris Sables, um, who was horrible in 2018. I think he was like dead last in points or something crazy. You know, they had Sean Wood in there at the time who, you know, while he's had a ton of success on the craftsman level as of late, he really flamed out at the team. Um, Michael White also announced his retirement at the end of the 2018 season. So Jared Ayers was a rookie at the time, just then taking over the 20. And then you had Dan Rogers, very up and down in the 11, but many assume that his best days were behind him after the horrific accident he had at Ajax Super Speedway. But Woods gets into that team and immediately they finish 1-2 in the Ajax 200 and they win the first two races of the season. And the rest is history. Um, no team in ASC history has ever had multiple drivers. In the modern era, that is. No team has ever had multiple drivers who win four-plus races in a season other than Michael White race in that 2019 season. And the craziest part was we were only running 14 race seasons at the time. You know, Even since they switched to 16 race seasons, we still – Never seen a team as dominant as Michael White Racing was in 2019. And then the craziest part about it all is that Woods obviously had that main title run in 2019, but his 2021 season is arguably the greatest in ASC history. I think personally to me, I know Todd Kidd just put up an incredible year against D.A. Gorkini to win the championship. But to me, I think Woods' 2021 season was still better. And he finished with less points than Todd Kidd did, um, 66 to 71. And he had 52 before the final race at Belltown, where it was really a non-factor because the championship was already locked up. Um, Woods won the title by, I believe, like 40-something points that year, nearly 50. It was ridiculous how dominant he was in 2021. One of the most dominant championship seasons in ASC history. And that was Randall Woods. And, you know, 2021, I think, was his peak, his pinnacle. And obviously, since then, he hasn't been the same driver. I think that was the end of his championship window. He had, he put up an incredible year in 2023 and was looking like he could very well win his third title. But then, obviously, the team imploded um, down the stretch. And I think that was the true end of his championship window and the true end of the prime of his career. And he just hasn't been the same driver since. But overall, Randall Woods is an incredible talent, a generational talent. You know, people throw that name around, but Woods was truly a generational talent. And he and Diego Ortiz are you know, a big reason why the ASC has grown into what it is today. They laid down the foundation. They're an incredible rivalry. Before Diego Arquiti and Todd Kidd, there was Randall Woods and Diego Arquiti. And all those moments they had back in the day, you know, um, that really laid down the foundation for what the ASC has grown into. So, this is, um, you know, not farewell, obviously, at this point. He still has one more season to run, one more season to add to his already Hall of Fame ASCA resume. And, you know, who knows? Maybe he could go on such a ridiculous season and potentially tie his dad's record um, with on the all-time wins list in the Cup Series. If he wins, what, like six races he'd have to do, which is seemingly implausible for a guy that's only won three times in the last four years. But um, you never know. You know, crazier things have happened. So we're done talking about the past. 
let's talk about the future. And I think that, you know, we're going to have a lot of talking about the true end of an era, but this is all, that also means that it's the beginning of a new era. And this move signifies it, I think, more than any other so far. Tony DelVal II has been officially tagged as Randall Woods' successor behind the wheel of the number 18. And from one generational talent passing the torch to another generational talent, um, Toyota obviously believes that DelVal is going to be the heir apparent for them and Michael White Racing going forward. And, you know, it's a slam dunk hire. I think that this was the main reason why they kept this kid in the Craftsman series instead of promoting him to Flores because I think behind the scenes, Woods was already kind of leaning towards retirement. And then obviously he ended up making it official and they needed someone special to take over and carry the mantle, the legacy of the iconic number 18 into the next generation and well into the 2030s. And I think Tony DelVal is a slam dunk hire. That This is by far the best move Michael White Racing could have gotten here. You know, 19 years old, he's the youngest pole setter in AC history, two-time Craftsman Series winner, um, reigning rookie of the year. You know, you could argue he should be the champion had that incident with Keaton Dunham not happened. Um, at San Diego in the penultimate round, it's a slam dunk hire. And um, DeVal has been groomed from birth, basically, to fill this role. And all the hard work that he and his father have put in to reach this point has finally paid off and manifested itself into this once-in-a-generation opportunity. You know, it's very rare that you get to succeed a legend. And, you know, Graham Darty can say that and Ross Jackson can say that. And very few drivers get bestowed this kind of an opportunity to really, um, you know, carry on the torch, get the torch passed to them and, um, you know, really usurp a legend's legacy like this. And, the pressure is going to be on this kid. That's for sure. But I think that he's used to it. I think that his father actually, you know, a lot of people hate on Anthony Doval and how boisterous and obnoxious he is. And, you know, him typing in all caps on Twitter all the time. And I know he said some crazy stuff about, oh, my son's going to be the best rookie the ASC has ever seen. And I think that's blasphemy. But I think that his father, um, has really prepared him incredibly well for this moment because, you know, his father has had him, his father has put a target on his back since birth, basically talking all this smack about his son. And now you're going to have the added pressure of the ASCA as a whole. And it's not just, you know, just the ASCA in general, but you're driving the iconic number 18. You know, this is a special number. You're filling in for an ASCA legend. You know, it's like the pressure does not get any higher than this. It does not get any bigger of a stage for Tony Delval II than this. And filling that seat is going to be, you know, an astronomical task, especially considering he's only going to be 20 years old in 2027. You know, that's a huge task for a kid like him to fulfill. But I think that if there's anyone that was ready for the role, I, I think it's him. So um, Tony Delval the second slam dunk higher. And again, it signifies the beginning of a new era and the dawn of a new age in the ASCA and I quite frankly I know it's sad to see all these the old guard bow out and let's transition to that um 
the likes of Dan Rogers and Jimmy Hood and Brian Braun and Nick Orchidi, and now you lose Randall Woods. All these guys have retired or, in Rogers' case, just let go this decade. <laughs> and it's crazy because the ASCA you grew up watching is gone. It's not here anymore. You know, all these guys are going to be gone by 2027. And so much has changed in the sport since then. We've seen the rise of the, some of these new, the, the sports new superstars. You look at Todd Kidd, the reigning champion, Cameron Atwood, Greg Healy are now both champions. Diego Arquiti has grown into a four-time champion, larger-than-life figure. Many would argue the GOAT of the ASCA. Um, and then you have the next generation now starting to come up. These are guys that were born, or in some cases born after, um, Randall Woods made his initial ASCA debut in what was the low series at the time in 2007. Like Tony Novell was born the year that Randall Woods made his low series debut, which is insane to think about. And now he's taking over for him um, 20 years later, nearly two decades. So, you know, it's really a changing of the guard. It's a passing of the torch moment. Um, but that's just, that's just the way things work. And that's just how time works you know these guys can't do it forever forever father time eventually catches up with them all and we've certainly seen that i think with um nick Orchidi and randall woods you know woods was a guy who we thought was invincible invincible for father time especially considering what he was able to do at age 35 but in 2023 but after that implosion Towards the end of that year, he has not been the same driver. And he's obviously has it, he's not completely washed, but you can definitely tell that um, you know, especially last year, he he just can't do the same things with, you know, not top tier equipment that he used to back he can't carry a car up the grid like he used to he he's just not that driver anymore and you know i don't think he's going to win a championship in his final year by any means i think those days are gone but i do certainly hope that my car racing can at least give him a package because i think woods is capable of winning races i just think that toyota has been down the past couple of years and they got to get it together at least for one final season. They spent all year basically preparing for the new regulations in 2026. They have to get this right and they have to do Randall Woods right. Do him a solid and let him go out on top at least one more time. Um, I really do not want to see him end his career on a 50 plus race woodland trout like Nick Orchidi. He Woods especially he deserves better for sure. So let's talk about the youth movement. And like we kind of mentioned it before, but this year is kind of the start of it with this rookie class. So um, I'd say Graham Doherty, Ian Adande, Ain Romo, I think these are guys that could be pillars of it for the rest of this decade into the 2030s. And then you look at um, now you've got Tony Noval, you know, Gunnar Thorson, I think is going to be at the cup level sooner than later. Um, Kane Dunham is another guy that people are incredibly high on and people already have a love hate relationship with. You either, you either love the kid or you hate him. You know, there's no in between. He's an incredibly polarizing talent. And there's more where that came from because, there, you know, every, you know, Jack Trenton, another guy for whom motorsports people are incredibly high on. You know, there's a lot of young talent coming up the rakes in the ESCA right now. And 
I'm incredibly excited to see it. And these guys are going to really carry the sport into, I think, its major boom period because I think the sport is on the cusp of really taking that next step. And, um, you know, you saw the ratings for the finale this past season. You know, people are hungry for ASC action. And it's only continuing to grow. And these young kids are going to be the guys that, you know, many people kind of get to know as the faces of the sport. The many new viewers get to know as the faces of the sport, that is. And you've seen them race and develop in the Craftsman series, which is why it's so important to watch the Craftsman series, because you're seeing the next generation grow and develop right in front of your eyes um these are guys that are going to be competing for the next 10 15 20 years and they aspire to be half the driver that randall woods was so we'll see um you know but it's it's pretty much inevitable that these guys are going to take over the sport and they are the future of the ASCA. All right, final topic in this special Randall Woods themed ASC weekly podcast episode. We got to talk about it. It's the elephant in the room. All the stuff I mentioned on Randall Woods' ASCA resume, cup champion, craftsman champion, most ASCA wins all time, Ajax 200 winner, Northern 200 winner. He's done everything in this sport except win the Windows 300. And he's tried 15 times. He's come up short 15 times. You look at 2015, he was so close, finished second that night. Um, 2017, I believe he finished third. You know, he he's had his moments. 2021 was easily his best chance at winning that race. And I think that one, if he can't get it done this year, that one is going to haunt him, I think, um, the rest of his life. Because he had the field covered that night. I remember vividly, he had a speeding penalty um, after the first run. There was an early yellow. He had a speeding penalty. So he drops back from 10 and from the lead because he qualified and pulled like the opening 60 something laps had the speeding penalty drops back to 10 tail on the lead lap cars his way through the field um and like 50 something laps which is unheard of takes the lead from doug bowden and you know is cruising at that point you know you think it's all but over woods has the field covered but then he he radios to his pit crew something's wrong with the engine and then before you know it, the engine's gone. And obviously, he ends up falling short in that race. And that was one of only, what, two DNFs? I think that might have actually been his only DNF of the entire season. I could be wrong on that one, but I actually believe that was his only DNF the entire year. Which is insane, because obviously, it wasn't even his fault. And... You know, had he won that race instead of finishing with 66 points or whatever he finished with, it was 66 points. He could have realistically have finished with like 45 or 44, which in a full season 16 race format, that's absolutely like insane, astronomical to think about that. That was even a real possibility, which just goes to show how dominant he was in 2021 and why I say it's the best season any driver has put up in ESCA history. Um, but yeah, so, you know, that was clearly his best chance. And he hasn't really come close to that since, you know, last year he was. Man, he was fifth, sixth most of the night, 
and he hasn't really had a shot to compete. Even 2023, you know, the year was in title contention. He was a non-factor. So he's Woods has always been hit or miss in this race. More often than not, it's a miss, though. And that's, you know, that's going to make this year incredibly tough. Like, I think that everyone now is going to be a Randall Woods fan on April 24th. I believe that's when the race is. April 24th, everyone is going to be a Randall Woods fan on Windows 300 weekend. I, you want to see the guy at least win it one time before he goes out. I mean, it's the only thing missing from his resume. And what a storybook ending that would be for him to finally snap his winless drought in that race. That would be such an incredible way to go out. And I think for Woods, he'd probably be happy to just retire that because that's about the only thing he's missing on his resume, you know, is that window 300. So, um, this is it. This is going to be his final chance. And I think that's going to be clearly the top storyline heading into that race, that race weekend. Can Woods get that elusive Windows 300 before he goes out? Because, man, if he doesn't get that, you know, it, it doesn't tarnish his legacy any at all. Like, he's still a top five driver without it, which just goes to show how it incredible of a talent that Woods is but if he does get it I think that really puts him over the top and um Woods just finally fill that one empty void in his trophy case that he deserves Wood, I don't normally say a driver deserves something but Woods deserves a Windows 300 man he's been so close and we all know the caliber of driver he is a driver like him deserves to go out with a Windows 300 absolutely no question about it he deserves to experience what winning that feels like at least once before he leaves so we're all going to be Randall Woods fans this Windows 300 weekend I don't think there's any question about it and um yeah it's going to be it's going to be an emotional weekend to say the least but that's it for the special edition of the ASC Weekly Podcast. Um, we'll be back, as I said last time, for Speed Weeks. I didn't think that we'd have to come back earlier, but then this announcement dropped. And obviously, when a legend like this retires, we're going to cover it. And we're going to dedicate an entire episode to it because Randall Woods was that dude. He was a generational talent, class act on and off the racetrack and um yeah just incredible and we had to dedicate an entire episode to it because Randall Woods was just that special and I think that it's important especially for the newer viewers that aren't as familiar with Randall Woods because they're not watching him during the prime of his career I think it's important to kind of educate them on the special talent that he was back in the day he was truly a superstar a franchise driver and he carried Mike Y Racing and Toyota to thus far their only two championships in history so yeah that's it for this edition of the ASC Weekly Podcast this is Charles Fallon signing out and like I said last time we'll see you again when we preview Speed Weeks <laughs>